chat up. Okay. There. How are you doing, guys? Everybody's coming in now. What a week it's been on the markets. Making money hand over fist. Whoops. Sorry about that. Good evening, everybody. Morning for me, it's just going past midnight. Hi, Tim, how you doing? Hi, Dusko. Very good, been making some good money. I'm, I'm smashing the S&P right now on my stops. We're in the circle, about 5% profit on the account balance so far for this year. And uh, I'm just very happy because we're in some really great trades as well, short. Uh, so S&P is minus and I'm plus. So I'm beating the S&P. That's, that's my main aim. Hey, man, Chow, how are you doing? How you doing, Matt? Anybody else from Europe? Are you all North America? Shout out where you're from while well, people are coming in. Can you hear me okay? California. Very nice. Love California. Go over a year. Hi, Alan. Hi, Jason. No, there's no, I, you, you, there's only, it's, this is one way, there's no talking from you guys, just chatting. Netherlands, ah, very good. Tim, we're working on it right now. Um, it's quite difficult for futures. We, we are working at the moment on stocks on Forex uh, and then we'll be switching to futures. So we are, we're working on it right now. If I, I can see, I can show you, I can show you guys, uh, where is it? So. This is the stocks version on the daily time frame. I'm testing it at the moment. Um, there. So, and I've been testing it for the last few weeks and it's working very, very well. In fact, in a circle and I have made some good shorts using this. And then we have, I don't know whether it's finished, there's a Forex on there yet, let's have a look. Oh, there we go. So uh, we've got Forex, um, main pairs there, and we've got, at the moment, we're going to add 240 to that as well. Uh, so, yeah, Forex is going pretty good. And I don't know whether he's done any more work on the future yet. So we are working uh, a lot of hours to try and get these guys to you, so we just got to uh, just got to be a little bit patient with us um, while we while we sort these out. The, the thing we're having at the moment is we're having we're having problems with these figures. The the, the numbers are wrong. This, the the signals are coming in, but it's printing the wrong numbers. There's something wrong with the data there. So we 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 are working on it right now. Trevor. I get up at 7 a.m. European time while you guys are in bed, and all I do is look at stocks every day, all morning, ready for my inner circle. So what I want to do today, um, I want to look at 
obviously what's happening in the markets right now. Uh, I want to look at um, how we can combine some of the indicator suites together to help us trade that. So I'm going to start with stocks and we're going to go to futures. Okay. Um, just going to switch off this second. I've got another screen, another couple of screens that are really annoying me right now. So first of all, I just want to talk about uh, insurance plays. What's happening in the market at the moment? Again, this big correction, uh, big, it's a reasonable uh, size correction so far. Um, but like all swing traders, when you're trading stocks, you're going to get caught in longs there. You've got to let them run to stops, but you've got to be ready. And you've got to be constantly looking, understanding the behavior of these markets uh, and looking for those shorts. Okay. So this is my, one of my stocks uh, panels, if you like. I have the, the daily, the four hour, the 30 and the one hour on here. So first I want to talk about HD here. On the 240, I'm in this with my inner circle now, and um, Mar I think Margaret is in for, here from my inner circle, a couple of other guys. I know she's in this right now. We're 100% profit times risk. So why was I confident in this? Well, to be honest, most traders are making money on the shorts right now. Um, but for me, there's a couple of things. We've had a nice bullish trend up. We've had a great fifth wave move here, went through the target zone, and that happens, guys, okay? But then we had earnings, and then after earnings, I got my roller coaster signal at 235.92, okay? But I went a little lower. Now, we talk about entry strategies here, okay? I went just below this pivot here, okay? Can you see that? So even though I've got a print on my roller coaster here, I know this stock is behaving pretty well. I'm also in this on my blend investment portfolio. I won't tell you any more of the stocks in there, but I'm along this. I'm still in profit, but what I'm doing right now is shorting this stock in another account, making money on this. So when it actually finds support, I can use that money from the short to buy some more Home Depot, okay? It's a simple strategy. It takes a lot of concentration, if you like, uh, and a lot of um, uh, balls, if you excuse the language, uh, but you need to be able to scan, look, understand the behavior of the markets right now, making sure the stock's behaving the right way it should. Right now, we're nearly at 100% profit times risk, okay? Where's my next support and resistance zone? There it is, okay? So we've got a little bit more uh, room there. We've got another one down here, okay? Um, so we are looking pretty good here uh, on the HD on the 240. Now I'm going to go to the daily. And I'm going to go to NCR. This has I just recently closed this. This was a short using the roller coaster. Okay. Um, again, I had the roller coaster signal here, 33.55, but it sort of dipped down the day before and I didn't get the entry. So I went below the low of the previous day. Okay. It came up, it came back down, it came through and we just it just tipped 300% profit times risk, okay? I, you know, approaching this support level, I'm out of this. This was an inner circle trade, massive trade, insurance play again, okay? We've got these shorts move a lot faster than long. If you've got to move in there. Okay, so the roller coaster cloud is here. My trailing stop really should still be there, but I'm out, guys. Okay, when you are swing trading stocks and you suffer some, and you're stuck, you're caught in some longs. Okay, I've always got longs and shorts on, but when you're caught in some longs and you can take 300% off one trade, that's three losses on longs. Okay, you, I took it off. Okay, really, I just took it off because that actually neutralizes three of the longs that I was in and I'm happy because I'm making more money on others as well. So, you know, we're in visa right now short. 
Again, another insurance play. Again, it was a roller coaster strategy, but I've done a lot of work on this. If I just zoom out here, we can see we've had a wave four, and then the fifth wave took a while because Visa's a bit of a grinder. Went through the fifth wave target zone, and then I got this entry here for my uh, short on the roller coaster. It was below the center line of this channel. And my thinking was, if it broke down below this channel, I've got some good support and resistance zone. Again, previous wave four pivots are, are crucial, guys. These are big points. If it can break that, it's going to come down and test the previous channel all the way down here. Now, I've got to be in this. Yeah, I'm holding Visa longer term. I want to make money on the way down here so I can reinvest it moving forward. Okay. Uh, USFD, another one, smashed through, roller coaster, okay? We had a wave four failure here, okay? It came, it came up, it didn't make the fifth wave move, and now we have just, we just piled down, and we are, we're just on it like a rocket right now. Guess what? I took profit on this today as well. It hit a big support zone. If it breaks through, it doesn't matter. I've got other shorts on right now, not a problem. What I'm trying to say is the roller coaster will give you those opportunities uh, to trade those shorts because you've got to have the insurance on just in case we have a bit of a bearish move down. And that's what's happening right now. Okay, one more. Um, we've done HD. Um, AMD, I think. Yeah, I'll look at that in a minute. So with stocks, I, I only trade the 30 and the 60 minute time frame on a Monday or a Tuesday, Tim, because I know I may have to swing those and carry them over. Um, anything after Tuesday, I, I only stick to the dailies. Normally, I just stick to the dailies anyway. Uh, but if I'm trading stocks on the 30 or the 60 minute, I'll only look to enter trades on a Monday or Tuesday with a view to be out of them by the end of the week. Okay, Descar, thank you. So again, AMD here, really good looking trade. So this is responding well to both the roller coaster and the Elliott wave. We've got a nice roller coaster move up here. It did take the train stop out, but continued to go. We had a wave four pullback. We had a fifth wave move, smash through the target. And then we get the signal here, okay, at 47.12. Remember, previous wave four pivots are very, very key. This is why I had a conservative entry, 45.89, below the previous wave four low, okay? So even though we've had a great fifth wave, we're coming down, we get the roller coaster signal here, okay? I've got to be sensible. I've got to look left. Where's my pivot point? There it is. There's the wave four. I've got to go below that. If I break that wave four, I've broken the previous bullish trend. This is no longer a correction. We're actually in a bearish trend. We've got to look for support and resistance zones on AMD. You know, we've got to look for clusters here. We've got to look for there. So let's do a little bit of work on this just to just to remind you guys that have been to those training events, and some of you are coming to New York as well, is just to where we actually see some support resistance. So I've got resistance here on this fifth wave. I've got a third wave just below it, and I've got another tip here. So I'm going to pull those all together, three touches, okay? Whoops, it didn't click. Let's do that again. Okay. I've got a nice cluster around support here as well for a whole week. This is a daily time frame, okay? So I've got more than three touches here. This is a great support zone, okay? If this comes back down to 30, so, so that's centered around $35. If it breaks $35, I've got a really strong zone coming down here, okay? Re at the bottom of this range period here. If AMD breaks that, we are in a bearish move. We've got a big one down here. 
Uh, but again, managing this trade now, just going to leave the roller coaster to it for now. And then we'll see how it goes from there. Um, no, you don't need to look at the bits, okay? The bits we I use today, and I'll show that on ES uh, for a second entry, but really the bias when you're talking about stocks, you're talking about looking for potential trend reversals, okay? Um, and you know, you're still gonna be green. You're still gonna be um, neutral, purely because what you're looking for on stocks in particular are trend reversals, okay? Let me just have a quick look at these two. So again, this is MPC. This is another short we had. Hit the fifth wave target zone today. So I'm just going to go through this. Um, so this was purely Elliott Wave, okay? So let's go through the rules, just to remind you guys, because this is a trilogy day. This is going through them all. So we have a wave four pullback against the main bearish trend. The 535 oscillator pulls back between 90 and 140. We've got false breakout dots there on the bottom of the stochastic. The stochastic pulls back against there, crosses over in the overbought zone, okay? It's like an elastic band. It wants to return back to that oversold zone. We've got the way for finding resistance here in the amber zone. We look for an entry. Where do we look for entry? First point of call on the entry is the 6-4 moving average low just here. But then also this pivot point. Let's look, just go big a little bit here. Okay, this pivot point, we had a gap down, it rejected, came back up again. So our entry has to be below this pivot. So the entry was 55.90, smashed the fifth, fifth wave target zone today. GBX was another recent trade last this last couple of days. Put it on there. Okay. So again, this one needed isolating. Okay. Because we've got this double, triple, top, bottom, and everything else going off right here. We needed to isolate with this. So let me just pull this in here. Four, six, three. Okay, Elliott Wave can be quite subjective. The idea is to make sure that you're isolating near the highs. So I've isolated here, okay, at the top. Why? Because this area here is not a trend. Look at the roller coaster here. We're getting all these longs and shorts. We're going in a range. We get a slightly lower high to this, okay? We then move down and we pull back up, okay? Once we've done that, we, we see the isolation up here, we make it, there it is. It's pulled back on a wave four, it's find resistance in the amber zone, 535 between 9140. On the stochastic, there is a yellow false breakout, stochastic dots on the bottom denoting a strong bearish trend. When the stochastic pulls back against that and crosses over in the overbought zone, it wants to return to the main trend. And it does, it goes down. Okay, guys, I've repeated it. I've repeated it three times right now for three different stops. But these are the things you need to be doing, okay? It's that simple. If all the rules are met and you've got a good looking trade, you go for it, okay? It's called the sausage machine strategy. You get all the rules, you keep pushing them through, long and short. When the markets turn, we now have those, um, you know, we've got fifth wave shorts here on the daily. We've got roller coaster shorts there that, that we've had uh, on those stocks that I've showed you there. Those ones will keep coming through. You've just got to be an active trader to get them through. Alan, I do. I, uh, I, in, in reality, on the daily time frame for stocks, I look back two years and I start this bar count at one. But then if I see this type of action where we are range bound, I've got to look for the, for the current trend. 
We've got to isolate where the current trend is, okay? So the yellow dots bar at the bottom here is a false breakout mark, okay? This means that the stochastic is having false breakouts of the oversold zone, denoting strong bearish momentum, okay? You see what happens here? It comes back up, it crosses over, let's look at the price action, and then it pulls back down again. And then we get all these false breakouts down here. We print that to denote a really strong bearish trend. And that's what you're looking for. And a wave four, it pulls back against there. You imagine your stochastic like an elastic band. It's tied to those false breakout dots at the bottom. It wants to return. Okay. And yes, it does work on futures, Forex, crypto even. So I've gone through some stocks now. I want to go through some futures, okay? Any questions on uh, on stocks, okay? You know I make most of my money on stocks, okay? Um, it, it just, it works. But you, I know you need capital and a lot of you trade futures. Uh, so we're going to go on to futures now. So let me just do that. Oh, you wanted me to look at SPY, didn't you? Sorry. Okay. I'm going to go weekly on here. I'm just going to isolate on these lows right now, see what this says. But we did get that deep pullback here, which was a wave four, and this was a fifth wave. I think that's turned into a third wave now. So let me just isolate down here. On uh, the bar count is 47, 47. Forty-seven. I do most of my work on the S guys, so uh, there's not a lot of work on here. Ooh, wow. Okay, so yeah, <coughs> we've got to put these support zones on here. Previous wave four, it in there. We've got one here as well. I don't think that's valid anymore, actually. I think this is the one we're looking at right now. This is where we are right now. That's a big fat one, guys, but I'm I'm purposely doing that on here because we've got we've got this double top here. This is a weekly time frame, and I've got a lot of clusters in here. We've got this bottom here, we've got this top here. This is a good support zone. If this breaks, we're gonna come all the way down to two, five, six, fifty in the middle of that zone there. This wave four has been very dramatic over one week. Let's go to the daily time frame on SPY. Yes, we are now official. Well, we're not officially. <laughs> let's, uh, let's just, I just want to look at this trend a little closer right now. Let me just get rid of the bits, bubbles on this daily time frame for the moment. Okay, so. And get rid of that. Okay, I can see a channel there. I know it's been broken out, but I want to draw it in anyway. Whoa, hang on, guys. My computer just went all funny there. I thought it was doing one of those updates because it is the middle of the night here, so. Do apologize. Okay, that's about right there. Okay. When you're drawing these channels, you've got to make sure you've got a lot of touches on the top or the bottom, but your center line has a lot of clustering support and resistance here. Support here on the center line, resistance here, okay. Resistance there, really good. So we've broken out of this daily channel. I have got a double bottom here with a slight, I'm just going to isolate my wave count here, okay, right now. I know, because this is a very long wave five. 
and I just want to isolate probably, I'm going to do it there, 362. Oops, that didn't work. Try that again. Okay. Yeah, we are definitely, uh, we, we're going to find some big support down here, I think. Uh, we need a Trump tweet, but uh, we have definitely broken out of that channel on SPY and we are in negative territory or we are in corrective territory right now. So, you know, likely scenario, okay, is if we just put that on there, you know, we're looking for coming to support. We then may come up on a B correction here. Maybe, probably not that high actually. We'll probably come up to about the bottom of the channel. And then we may have another go at this and come down there. Okay, that's what could happen. Um, not saying it's going to, if we come back on SPY, back in the channel here, this could act as support again. All we need is some good news from somewhere, okay? So that's SPY, let me get rid of that, let's go to futures. I'm just gonna have to restart this one because we had the close and now the open and everything goes all funny. With Data on think or swim. Let me just reset that one there. Okay, I'm going to go over ES today. You must have made money on ES today. Okay, so I'm going to go big on the five minute here. I'm going to bring the 60 minute over as well in a minute. I just wanted to show you um, the trading opportunities today were immense. Okay, uh, so what did we do today? First of all, we played a range breakout from the New York Open and we got into a short. In fact, we were just uh, 365, I think it was in, wasn't it? Yes. And we played this move down to break out of the channel on ES down here. You see where it hit the channel here? We took our profit there and I think it was a, um, it was a big move anyway, uh, but we come back down and we added some more using the bits on the hourly. So this is the hourly chart. Whoops. So this is the, this is the, where is it? This, this, Signal here, sorry, this one here, let me highlight it. This is the one we, uh, this here, at this price, this is where we added to our position. Remember we entered it at 365, uh, back up here, but then on this next hour, we had this bit signal here at uh, 3057 or 3056, something like that, wasn't it? Guys, so what we're looking for there is we've got confirmation that we have some bearish momentum because we've got the, the bits, the breakout signal, the increased volume to the downside on the bits, giving us that signal. Look left. Where does that entry give us? It gets us below this recent pivot from early hours during the European session. This is a great looking entry. Okay. Got the stop above here. Not a problem. We add, so we were in two contracts already and we added two more at this point and then we just shot down here. Hit the support level. What did we do? We got out. Okay. You got out. You wait for the pullback to happen. Okay. It comes back and tests. 
the uh, support resistance zones that I've got on, and then you go back to your roller coaster here, okay? We don't take the long here because we are bearish. We find support, it comes back down, we get a roller coaster. It actually, the roller coaster entry is below the range of the opening candle for the New York session there, okay? Again, good entry, lots of fresh air to this support zone where we took profit before, it actually smashed through. And if you're still in that ES trade right now, it's having a bit of a pullback, your roller coaster is there. 2973. 23065. Okay. That's nearly a hundred point move. Neil uh, uh, Neil Jan, it it takes practice. It's about understanding behavior of the markets, what's happening. So our indicator suites will give you the, um, the signals, but what you need to do is understand the behavior. And I cover that in those live training weekends because this is all about behavior. And we have these three indicator suites so you can understand how the markets are behaving. So on my top charts, for example, I have got the bits, okay? So that gives me, I can see right now, we're having a bit of a bullish move. On this three minute here, look, we can see the candles green. The gray candles are up candles, but with lower volume, okay? So we're finding support there. Then we're getting some indecision doges, okay? Then I get a green candle. So the volume's increased and it's increased the upside. We get consolidation, but then we get another green candle, then another one, then another one, then another one. So every single candle, the volume is greater than the first one. We're starting to build momentum to the upside. So I'm understanding the volume and the price action together using the BITS indicator. I'm using Elliott Wave. Uh, I'm using BITS for second entries or on or real entries, and I'm using roller coaster uh, for for those entries as well. It takes time. Uh, I, you know, you've got to trade them every day, uh, and you've got. To, I mean, a lot of it is getting to those those weekend sessions. The next one's in New York because that's all I do all weekend. Uh, well, um, real quick, two of just... my inner circle of massive options traders. So. The swing trades we do with the stocks uh, for um, for using for Elliott Wave for roller coaster, they both use options very very well. Uh, Alan, a lot of the time the opening candle uh, does give us the direction, but also gives uh, strong support resistance zones as well. So if I go to ES here. You can see the London open <clears throat> here. Look at that. And that was in between this spot resistance zone and it actually acted as resistance, this zone from the London open as well. And New York, <clears throat> once it broke down below this pivot here after the open, it just kept going. It came back up, it tested the London range and then came back down again. Uh, we can go back in time as well. When we see this consolidation here, we do move up initially uh, on New York, so that's the initial long, but then we find resistance at my channel. This is my 60 minute channel, okay? It finds resistance, comes back down, we get a roller coaster, we go short, we get a great looking trade into this next support level, okay? So it's the linear support resistance zones, it's the, um, the channels that are really important, and I do teach you these on those weekends. Uh, man, Chow, we are trying to get to uh, California in October. Um, we, we, we're looking at it, but you know, at this moment in time, the only guaranteed one is New York right now. 
um, because I am not going to go all the way to California for 10 people uh, because it, for me, it's a really long trip. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, again, very, very simple here. Uh, just easy trades. That's the five minute time frame. So, when you're trading future, you've got to think how long you want to carry it. What's the sort of risk? Because some of these trades on the 60 minute time frame can bring a lot of risk because the distance between entry and stop on the 60 minute is very large. That means go down to the micro ES. So we are trending down right now on the 60 minute. This is my channel that I've drawn in. It's just broken out of there. It's gone parabolic. You know, there's no real trend there right now. I've got to look. I've got to go back now. When we're looking at ES, I've got to go to the daily time frame and I've got to find some lows. Okay. Let's go to the daily. Let's do our work. This is the uses that I usually do on a Saturday. Okay. I've got to go back, got to look at some of these now, for some older time frames, got to pull those through. Um, and just just, I'm just going to extend those again. A chart is always live for me. I'm always putting those in. So uh, just take it up to the third. Put these in as well. These are all. This is my daily channel here. Look, you see. Okay. So this will come back into play. on there. Okay, we're there now, aren't we? So we're just adjusting these guys. Okay. Once they're on, they're on. They never go off. They'll come, they'll always in handy again and then we'll just do this last one here okay so this is the daily time frame we've broken out of the daily channel here can you see this big channel we've broken down we've got some linear support resistance zones coming down there We've got some big ones down here as well that I'll probably move these from weeklies. Um, but again, we've got some good support coming up soon. Uh, this is just um, me just set, framing my chart. The, the big thing for me is we've closed below this daily um, channel right now. So we are in bearish territory. So go back to the hourly. So it looks a bit messy, but basically we've broken out, broken out of this daily channel right now, okay? And there is basically now just linear support resistance zones holding us up. I mean, these can hold, any of these can hold. All it takes is people to find value in these stocks that are pulled back right now. And we're going to look at Apple to see how, Apple is basically S&P, guys, okay? We need to understand how that's going to behave. To, uh, to allow us to, to make those decisions. So, you know, this correction is not over for me until we're back in this daily channel and I'm back broken out of that 60 minute channel. So ES has got a lot of work to do right now. Uh, it can do it. We have these corrections. Just want to bring Apple chart over. Whoops. Sorry guys. The, when I've got Zoom on, the charts sometimes stick to my mouth. Go to Apple. Woo wee! Okay. Still in the channel. If it breaks that way four, we're going to come down 
to this sort of linear support resistance zone, middle 230. At this moment, it's still a wave four. Remember our rules, okay? <clears throat> if it breaks this, we've got a lot of clustering around here, okay? Even if it breaks that red zone, it's got to get through 255 for me. You see, I was talking to, um, to Raul earlier. The 535 has broken the rule there. When we get a parabolic pullback correction that we're in right now, that most likely will be broken. If this channel holds and the red zone holds, we get the, cr the, cross the stochastic crossing the oversold zone. We don't get a false breakout in the bottom, okay? then we are good if this finds support to look for a long in Apple. Right now, all we're interested in right now is to see if we get support. Where that support lands, we, you know, we've got to look, does it break this channel? The next port of call are these two big zones down here. We've got others, I've got other zones in here as well. This is my average holding price on Apple is $160. And I've probably mentioned that before. Okay. I, for me to get another entry in Apple, I need a pullback to come down to this sort of level. So my average holding price still remains pretty low. It's a good, strong stock. But for those not in Apple right now, I'm looking at the S&P. Let's see how this holds. There's a big cluster there. Good couple of weeks of price action at that sort of level. And that coincides where we are right now with this. So good looking pullback on Apple. We've just got to give it some time. So one of our rules has been broken on this, but don't get too hung up on that when we've had a really deep correction. It will happen. Because the oscillator measures the difference between the five and the 35 moving average. When we get big par parabolic moves up or down, the distance, the gap between those two EMAs increases dramatically really quick. So Trevor, if the false breakout gets in the bottom zone, we are bearish, okay? So I'll wait, I, I would, you know, I, I, I may even look for a, a short signal to get some, have we got anything there? Nothing at the moment. Okay, to actually get some insurance right now. I've got a, quite a few shorts on at the moment, so I'm not too worried. I'm covering a lot. I've got some good insurance plays, some shorts on some of my blend investment portfolio right now, which will give me more capital to buy when we do find support. And we will find support, uh, you know, at this moment in time on the grand scheme of things, it's a normal pullback. It's just happened really quickly. J-U-N-J-N-U-G. Okay, let's have a look at that. And again, this, this last week of the month is the trilogy. And it's also about you guys taking uh, asking us to look at things and doing a bit of analysis. So, okay. That's a big gap, 64 to 105. So there is a roller coaster there, guys. That is huge. And we've got some support down here. Well, I can go all the way back to there for that, do you see? Okay. Got some support down here. Let me just go back a little further because it looks like we've got a, yeah, got a double bottom there as well. Yeah, we've got some support down there. I, to be honest, there must be better trades to go short at the moment because this is such a big gap. It's moved very, very quickly. And we're going to be going into support there. I think you've missed the move on that, Scott. Really, that should have been probably intraday. Yeah, okay. So I'd be, I'd be actually using, again, this, this, again, I teach this multiple time frame strategy is look at the 60 minute. We're on a wave three right now on the 60 minute, okay? If you missed 
the short on the 60 minute for the roller coaster, fine. Let it find support. Remember, we've got some support levels down here. So those that come to these training events, you, say, you hear me say, talk to yourself. This is what you should be doing now. You've done your multiple time frame analysis. We're on a wave three right now. This is where we see the wave three potentially ending, finding some support. We then look for a wave four pullback into one of our zones and then look to trade the fifth wave move, okay? Right now, we've not got the false breakout on the bottom. It will happen if it continues to come down like this. So this is the scenario that we're looking at right now. So on the daily, the roller coaster, it's too big a risk, okay? Too big a risk. We've got a big support level coming up here. I'm looking at the 60. I've got a, we're on a wave three now. We're on a current trend. Let it find support. Let it pull back. If all my rules are met, I'm looking for a short there. Now, gold's, gold's had its move at the moment, Scott. Gold is not. The correlation between ES and gold is just not working right now, okay? Trevor, this, it's not that anything's more important than the other one. It's about what's happening, what the behavior is at that time to which signal you're going to take, okay? You can get bigger moves using a roller coaster, but bits give you those signals just as well, okay? The problem with bits the last few days is that the candles have been large, okay? So the gap between stop and entry has been large, so the risk is large, yeah? So those, those, those bit signals that we're getting just give you confidence that we're getting that volume, it's coming down, uh, and you look for those little pullbacks, you look for the roller coaster entries, but a lot of the time you're gonna have to go to the micros because uh, some of these entries, the difference between that stop and uh, entry, it's too large. Uh, for, for most traders. I can, I can see that, Scott. Yeah, let's just go to gold a second, actually. Let's have a look at gold. Now, again, multiple time frame analysis is really important. When I look at gold right now, we have the big move up on gold, okay, as the ES was coming down. Then gold pulled back with the S, correlation has gone out of sync. Now we've gone sideways, okay? And this has been quite a big sideways action, okay? So you've got to think, right, let's frame this. Let's frame this. Okay, we're going to take a high there. We're going to take the low there. Okay. This is our range right now. Let's just make it a slightly lighter here. Okay. So this is a range we're in right now. Gold is not going anywhere. I haven't traded gold this week. I've just I've just traded ES um, to predominantly stocks because when stocks move, they move and you make a lot of money when they go down, okay? So this is a range. So we've got to break out of this range one way or the other. The correlation is not working right now. So you just stay away from gold. You stay away from gold miners. Gold is at some really good highs right now. ES is the trade. 6E is the trade. Look how gold goes right here. Dollar's been going down today, last couple of days. Look at 6E. We get the move up. So when you are looking at trading futures, for example, we need to be looking at the correlations that are working, yes? So gold, remember, centered around that is the dollar. Let me see if I can pull that picture up again, just to remind you guys. Probably pull that up every week, uh, just to remind you. Uh, pictures. Correlations. 
Okay. So remember, these are correlations that, when, you know, this is when all the ducks are in a row, the stars are aligned, whatever you want to call it. So when the dollar's going up, gold goes down. Okay. When the dollar's going down, gold goes up. 6E, 6B goes up. Gold's not moving at the moment with the dollar going down. 6E is. So that's the correlation you should be trading. Dollar's going down. S&P is going down. 6E. So 6E and the S&P are the ones you should be trading right now, not gold and the S&P. Gold's going sideways. It's not working. So we've got some great moves up on 6E right here. We've had a real big move down. Uh, with the dollar getting strength. And then as the markets crap themselves and we're getting this correction, we are getting that dollar coming down. So we've had okay data coming out of the US, but the market correction is actually forcing the dollar down. So 6E is reacting to the upside. So that's the trade you should be trading right now, not gold. Gold's going sideways, okay? Uh, yes, if if the large gap between stop and entry, uh, if, if the gap is too large, you just don't trade it, Trevor, or you look for micros, okay? So when I say micros, let's look at um, micro ES, okay? We'll look at the signal we had today on the bits, just as an example. Let me put the uh, bubbles back on. Oh, what time is it? Uh, 10 to 1 in the morning. My stomach's growling. I want to diet at the moment. Okay. So on ES, we've got a, a 3093 stop, a 3056.75, okay, entry. So if I bring my risk calculator and did that on normal ES, okay, we're going to go short at 3056.75, long 3093.75. That's $1,850 risk per one contract, okay? For some traders, it's pretty good, yeah? For a lot of traders, that's a lot of risk, okay? Yeah? So then if you go on to MES, that's a tenth of that. That's more like it. That's $185 risk. You're going to trade one contract MES. Does that make sense, Trevor? Right, I'll go through it again. Bit signal, 3056.75, short. This is on the hourly. 3093.75 is the stop. When I put that into my calculator, the risk per one contract for a normal ES contract is $1,850 risk on the normal ES, okay? On micro ES, it's only a tenth of the size. So take that zero off the end here. That's only $185 risk per one contract on the micro ES. So you will trade the micro ES. Okay, let's look at oil. Okay, we're in a downtrend. Next, mate, ooh, we are converging with daily and 60 minutes right now, okay? So this is my, uh, sorry, 240, sorry, it's in gray. This is my 240 down uh, channel. We've come back inside it. This is my 60 minute channel. We're in that area right now. Will it find support? Did it bounce off that center line of that channel right now, okay? Yeah, the correlation's still good with the dollar and oil. That's good. That's working at the moment. 
I don't see any trades on the 60 minute right now. All I see is potential for good support here. It really depends on how the dollar is going to behave. Let's go to 15 minute. No. Go to the five minute. Great oil short today. Ooh, that was a big move coming out of that opening range. 47.15 to 46.04, great move. Nice move into that opening range on the roller coaster short. Yeah. I think... Short on crude. We are, you've got to play the 60 minute channel. You've got to look for signals uh, coming off the top of this channel. It may come back and test the top of this. You, I can't stress this enough, guys. And I teach this in these weekends. Look at these, the convergence of these two channels here. Look where we find resistance, okay? Right there. There's no coincidence there at all. We found support here, okay? We found support at the bottom of the channel here. We've got now the case where if we're going to get short signals near the top end of this channel, we're going to go short, okay? Always bear in mind that the center line of the channel is going to find support there. If we get through that, we can then test uh, the center line of the larger 240, which is this line here, and then the bottom of the 60 minute channel. So when you have these channels on your chart, they will help you decide whether to get in a trade or not. So if you're looking for shorts on crude on the bits indicator, the roller coaster, the Elliott wave, have those linear support resistance zones, so those, those uh, horizontal support resistance zones that I put in the 5K club. I mean, to be honest, $60 a year for those zones. I should be charging $600 a year uh, for those zones because they are really hot. The channels, you've got to learn to do them. I do teach them in the core training strategy course either online or in person on, uh, on the weekends, um, because we're looking for shorts right now. When we, when we zoom out on this oil, we've got a great, we've got a good looking channel here. It has broken out a couple of times, uh, but right now we're looking for shorts. It's going towards the top end of this channel. We're looking for bits breakouts at the top of that channel. So I go to one of my top, my top chart on oil here, We can see it coming towards the top of that channel. And all I'm looking for really is some resistance up around here and some volume coming down, get those big signals and go short. How to draw a chart. So let's look at something that I haven't got a channel on. Channel. No. Right, okay. So if we're trading futures and we're day trading futures, we need the six minute time frame. So I'm going to silver. Okay, we do do the daily and the 240, but I'm just going to show you an example now of how to draw the channel. Okay, so would you agree? Let me just take these um, bits, bubbles off again. Nila Jan, would you agree that this is going when we get to it? Silver on the hourly is going down. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to look at a center line coming through here sort of thing. So what if, first of all, I want to, going to decide whether I'm going to go onto the tops. So I'm going to go to the high here first. And I'm going to push this pivot here. So I've got two touches at least. And I'm going to click. Now, the bottom of the channel is not important as the center line of the channel. Okay. 
The center line needs multiple touches, both support and resistance, okay? So what I'm looking at here is the channel. So let's just move in on this. So I've got two touches on the top. I've got one touch on the bottom, but the, my center line, I've just found support there right now, okay? I've got resistance and clustering here. I've got support here. I've got a bounce off and support here, okay? So again, I've got a couple of touches on the top. I've got one touch on the bottom, usually the case, but my center line, I've got a lot of clustering. I've got a lot of support and resistance. This is the channel that it's in. Mark, if you could only buy one right now, I would say roller coaster rather than bits, okay? Purely because we're getting a lot more roller coaster trades and the bits trades are a lot higher risk right now because the moves are bigger. No, I don't use regression trend channel because you need a high and a low, okay? And it doesn't measure it accurately. So if I use a regression trend channel on silver right now, I've got to go to the high. I've got to go to the low. That don't look right, does it? This is regression trend channel here, which is supposed to be automatic. Uh, and, and, and it's good, usually if we regret doing aggressive wave for pullbacks. But in reality, the trend channel and the institutional traders do it by hand. They don't use regression trend channel. They frame the move. They frame the trend. And this is the frame that we need. Regression trend channel relies on the highs and the lows. So Scott, the roller coaster offers um, you to trade the wave three. It uh, allows you to trade uh, the stochastic overbought to oversold. It just gets you in more entries. It gets you more trades, okay? So with silver here, um, have we got earlier wave on this? Let me have a look. We just put earlier wave on there. I think I took it off today. Okay, so random example, silver on an hourly. We get a move up, we get a fifth wave high. We've got a potential trend reversal. This is the roller coaster entry here. Can you see that? We trade this short. It pulls back on a wave four. It takes us out our trailing stop. This is a trailing stop position here. Oh, we get a wave four pullback. We trade the fifth wave down. So we've been able to trade silver twice using the roller coaster and the Elliott wave before we only had the opportunity to trade that fifth wave. So the roller coaster gives you those opportunities to get earlier in a trend. But also, if we're range bound, it allows you to trade from overbought to oversold to overbought. It gives you more trading opportunities. So again, before, when you only had Elliott Wave, you would only trade at the short here, but you would have the opportunity to get that trend reversal. And it's, it's even more distinct when we look at stocks. Uh, I mean, that's a great example on silver there. That was random. You just asked me I was on silver, so I had a look. Uh, but when we look on stocks, when we go, let's go big here. Let's go to, uh, USFD was it? So let me move that one. Okay. So using the Elliott wave, let's just look at this particular stock. Okay. 
we had a move down here. We got into the third wave using a roller coaster. It found support. No, it does that. Wave four pull back, fifth wave move. Pulls back up. We get a roller coaster above the wave four pivot. We go long. It pulls back on a wave four. We go long on the fifth wave. We've just gone short and had the massive move all the way down here, there. Can you see now, Scott, how many more trading opportunities you get by adding that roller coaster indicator suite? Yeah. And I got, there's so many. I trade these all the time, okay? With my inner circle, they will tell you. We traded CSIQ, okay? This trade has been perfect. Okay, we've had, I've got to go back a long time to find a failing trade here. Short roller coaster, winner. Long roller coaster, winner. We got a loser there. We got a short winner here on the roller coaster. Trend reversal, long. We traded the, the third wave with the roller coaster. We had a wave four pullback. We traded the fifth wave. Okay, so entry. On the roller coaster we print it for you there's the entry there's the stop these are the trailing stop positions that we print automatically to help you manage the trade so these are trailing stop positions you adjust your trailing stop position every day on this stock trade until it takes it out that's your exit there's no uh, there's no target because it can just keep going. Does that make sense, Scott? Yeah. Let's find one that's just triggered Visa. Okay. So again, trade the fifth wave. Visa's coming down. This was my entry that it printed here. I went a little bit lower and this was the stop. Don't know where the exit is yet. Okay. Um, HD, we're on the 240. So again, my exit was printed there, but I actually just adjusted that entry. Sorry, my entry was printed there. Okay. And then I just went a little bit lower below this pivot. But as you can see now, we still haven't printed the trailing stop for this yet. But very, very soon, if this continues to pull down, we'll start to print that trailing stop position. Uh, we, we use our lagging point of control for trailing stop, Scott. So, you know, it's different. So if I look at... Um, Uh, go back to CSIQ for a second. Oh, that's the 240. <laughs> so depending on the move, the, these, these trading stop positions worked out with our, what's called our lagging point of control. Okay. So uh, this is part of our secret source, but as you can see, we get the big moves on the wave three. It pulls back on the wave four, fine. It comes, takes you out, but then you get another opportunity because your wave four behaves properly, you trade the fifth wave, yeah. So we print this automatically, yes. It's totally, everything's automatic. The entry in green, the stop in red, and then when our point of control gets through the original entry, we start to print the trailing stop. And you just keep adjusting it. If this is a daily time frame, you adjust it every day. If it's a one minute time frame on ES, for example, you adjust it every one minute or gold. Okay, gold's brilliant on the one minute when it's not uh, rangy. Let's go to the one minute here. I don't really trade the one minute on ES. Let's have a look at gold's been in a range. Has it been behaving well? Oh, I needed to take that off, didn't I? Okay. 
No, gold's not behaving well at all at the moment. Ooh, a couple of good ones there. So this is a one minute chart on gold. Every one minute you would adjust your trading stop to this position, got took out there, went long, made profit, got took out there. Another profitable trade there, another one there. Another profitable trade. Yeah, it's working okay. Not necessarily, Trevor. It's a, uh, the roller coaster is a combination, okay? It's uh, the MACD stochastic cross on steroids. Okay, so what I'm going to do, again, I shared that last week. I'm going to share it again. I'm going to share two blog posts on the roller coaster that I've written to help you understand how it works. The first one is the mechanics of it, okay? And that is going into the chat right now. And then the other one is called getting in the groove. So you've got to find the right time frame for the instrument you're trading that's in the groove for the roller coaster. And this is a great article there. Um, Raul, can you also share the um, link for the indicator page, please? Sure, there you go. So on the indicator page, uh, you can choose the platform you want to, you're using, okay? So if it's trading view, you go to trading view, you go to roller coaster, and you can watch the video tour if you wish, and you can subscribe now, okay? Very, very simple. Anybody got any more questions for me? It is 10, it's 1, 10 a.m. here in the morning, and I, I want to finish. I want to go to bed. This has been recorded. No problem, JW. You're welcome, Mark. Hopefully seeing some of you. Cheers, Beck, in New York. Sally, you coming to New York? You said you're going to come to New York. No updates at the moment, Mark. No. Okay, brilliant, Sal. Be good to see you again. Thanks, guys. Okay, so I'm going to go now. I'm going to switch my computer off, go to bed, and I'm not going to set my alarm. Welcome, guys. Okay, so I'll see you all very soon. Or no beer before bed. Thank you, Manchow. Thank you, Rochelle. Uh, the class online is on the web. It will, the recording will be up tomorrow, yeah, in the webinar section on the website. Cheers, Scott. Okay, I am going to get going now. Cheers, everybody.